she's been up to, and I just can't wait to share with you. Um, can I have someone turn off the light switch to hit the panel focus to the board? That's perfect. Thank you. So, um, Elaine, okay, can you hear me? Sure. Yes, I can hear you just fine. Awesome. You want to turn your mind up? So let me tell you just a tiny bit of background. I know that both classes have been studying a little bit about heritage and the things that we are passed down from our ancestors and our culture and what uh, today and what our families do. Um, when sorry, okay. when um, when we were thinking about this and we were invited by the Rexburg City Council to help go to uh, present our art at and uh, at a at the city's art exhibit. I thought of Elaine. So Elaine and I met through National Geographic. Um, we, she has, I'll, I'll let her tell a tiny bit about what she's been doing with National Geographic over the years. Uh, but she works with that, has worked with National Geographic in education. She's retired now. And so we've done some projects together and working with students. Those of you who are waving at Elaine so cutely and whatnot, I'm sure she'll blow you kisses in a minute, but just keep your hands down and be some before. And this is not new. And I think you'll be okay. All right. So Elaine has had a really fun art form that she's been involved in of collage. And when I see her collages, I actually see things in them that I think, oh my goodness, that could very much be a fun way to represent heritage. So as, a, as an artist and as a friend, I asked her if she would share with you her work, how she creates it. In the end, we are asking everyone in this room and all those who are absent to portray what you think heritage means to you in multiple forms. Collage can be one of them. You don't have to do collage, but it is one of the options, all right? So I appreciate you taking notes on how to collect for the collage, how to organize for the collage. If you are inspired at the moment saying, oh my goodness, my family were candy makers. I could do this in my collage that would represent the candy makers in my family. Um, that would be something that you could be writing down too. You could even kind of be sketching out what you think your collage could look like if it were to represent your heritage or what you understand about heritage. All right. So Elaine, we're just going to introduce you and like introduce yourself a little bit. Are you and okay? Really thank quickly. you so much for being here. Um, if I move her back so I can hold get on, some yeah. sharing permissions and stuff yeah. going. I'm Thank sorry, you. Elaine. Give me one second. Sure, that's fine. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I just coffee. I can't oh, see you. Yeah, so, yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Second, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh my co-host. Yeah. All right, Lynn, you're now co-host, so you should be able to share. Sorry about that. Sorry. All right. Very good. Thank you. All righty. Here we go. Here we are. Well, first of all, while I'm just here before I share, I just want to say how happy I am to be here. I was really excited when uh, Mrs. Barton asked me to come and to talk to you about something that I just love doing. Um, and something I just started doing late in life. Um, and I'll tell you more about that process and, and what happened to me and my story with doing collage. But anyway, I'm excited to be here. I'm happy to see you. And I'm hoping as we go through, you think of some questions that you have also, because we'll try to leave some time at the end um, to make sure there's room for questions. So I am going to share my PowerPoint. You've seen a lot of PowerPoints, haven't you, in the last few years? Um, Okay, there we go. Okay, can you see that okay? Looks like you can. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Good. I always have to ask that question. All right. Um, basically, we're going to talk today about what collage is, some of the themes um, that I've used in my collages, and you'll be using themes for your assignment with heritage and culture. I'm very excited about that. I'd love to see what you come up with. We'll talk about different kinds of media to use in collage, and you'll understand what I mean by that. Supplies that you need, um, which is really minimal and the process, and this is my process, okay? Everybody who does any kind of art has different processes, but I'll show you mine, and then you will develop your own. And what you see on the right is one of my collages that includes um, different kinds of media, and since I'm from South Dakota, I had to put buffalo in it. So let's see if I can get this to move. There we go. Um, basically, what does collage mean? Uh, it's a French word. Basically, it means to glue things. So you take a piece of paper, any sort of um, what we call substrate, you'll see more about that, and you glue things onto it. That's what it means. And why are collages helpful in art? I like to use collage because it helps me say things that are maybe hard to express in words. To keep in mind, as we go through here, I'm always gonna say start small. I don't do anything big yet. I'm kind of um, working toward bigger, but right now about the largest thing, that, uh, thing I've done is like an eight and a half by 11 size thing. Uh, but a lot of them are much smaller than that. It's a good thing to get all your equipment, supplies, materials ready. You know, see my messy process as we go through here, but not to get locked in because you might have a good idea that maybe you didn't have prepared. You have to go look for something. Um, it's really important. You don't need to buy anything to do collage. Probably maybe a glue stick. I love glue sticks. Most people who do collage, even the folks who are really professional and sell their work, use glue sticks or some sort of adhesive. Glue sticks are cheap. Use what you have and what you can find. We'll talk about that. Don't overthink it. Boy, the time that I've had the most fun is when I haven't really thought about where I'm going with something necessarily, and it sort of falls into place or it doesn't. And then it's important to play and have fun with it. Probably the most important thing for me is don't listen to the critics. And I said, including yourself. And I think I really mean expect, especially yourself. I spent all my life, except for the last few years, afraid to do art. In quotes, but afraid to do things because I didn't think I was artistic. I didn't think that I could create things, mainly because I can't draw anything. My stick people look like stick people. Um, a face doesn't look like a face. The flower looks maybe like a flower, but nobody would ever say, is that a photograph or is that a drawing? Nobody would ever say that. And so that held me back. And I didn't think that I could do it, even though people said, oh, you're creative in other ways. I didn't buy it for myself until COVID, <laughs> until I was home in quarantine, starting to play around with collage, enjoying it so much and realizing that I could do that, that it brought me joy and that there were some things that were kind of good and things that were kind of weird, but that was okay too. So themes, um, Mrs. Barton said, talk about your themes in art. And I thought, but I don't have any. But then I started looking at some of my, my collages and I thought, of course you do. Um, and so I'm gonna show you a few of them and see if you can agree with the themes that I came up with. This one's really important to me and it was one of my very first collages. And it's important to me for a couple of reasons. First of all, it goes to my roots in South Dakota. Um, all South Dakota images, we've got a picture in the background of a map of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, um, a beautiful native um, um, image at the top and another map, um, other things, South Dakota. But the main piece here, and what's the focal point of this, is um, Sue Ann Big Crow. Sue Ann Big Crow was a star basketball player on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation for the Lady Thorpes. Um, basketball is really important in South Dakota, and it's very important um, just all over, and especially on the reservation. Sue Ann was a star player, scoring many points in high school. And then she was killed in a car accident when she was 17. Sue Ann exemplified a lot of things for young women in South Dakota, not just on the reservation. And her memory is honored. I love this picture of Sue Ann. And it looks like power. And it looks like empowerment. So that was my theme for that. Um, I love to travel. I love to get in the car and drive. 
And so the theme for these, as you can probably tell, is about travel, both of them. Now, these are both really, really small. These are both created on um, three by five index cards, which is one of my favorite um, places to do collage. Again, think small, start small. And these are pieces that I'll show you the process for that. Let's see, let's keep going here. I also love to fish. Um, and so I found a picture of the fish. Um, this is also on a three by five index card. I love the fish. And then uh, a picture of people fishing that's sort of cut like a fish. And of course, it's on a map of South Dakota. So you can see some, this is the lake country of South Dakota up here. Down in the lower left corner, I have no idea why I thought I should add that to it, except I really like it. So it doesn't have anything to do with fishing, but I thought it was kind of cool. Um, here we have a ballerina. And my daughter took ballet lessons for years, and I just really love this. And you can see I love some colors and things here, but it's about, look at her. I mean, she's just loving it. There aren't very many rules in collage, but one of the rules you'll see on here, and it's, you know, some people and even myself just ignore that rule sometimes. But when I do, it doesn't look so good. Now, if you can think about what that rule is, but it has to do with placement of the girl. The rule basically is don't put a person just kind of hanging in there. So they could, should be standing on something. In this case, she's standing on the bottom of the collage, but she could be standing on a stairway, on a box, whatever, but she's not floating in the air. Yeah. Um, another theme, another empowerment and peace. We've got the Arab woman who I just loved. I loved her peace sign um, and the flowers. Um, so, you know, they're um, often silenced. Uh, she's silenced with the flower. And I thought that that was empowering because she's not really silenced at all. These two, um, this is one of my all-time favorite, and this one just, just always, I look at it and it just, um, it does a lot for me. I had the picture of these two boys um, for a long time. I had it when I first started, and I cut this out of a magazine. Also on the same page was the picture of the house above. Um, the butterfly is something that came off a piece of paper. I just cut it out. It's, it's really rigid, and it's painted on there, and then I added some words. Um, I had this for a long time, didn't do anything with it. And then I decided I need to do something with these boys. I love them so much. I love the older brother and the look on his face. Um, I didn't even realize uh, the words at the bottom I did find um, on purpose. Um, America absolve us of our, you can imagine what it is, make us safe again. I felt the older boy was making the younger, assuming brother safe. Um, and then there were some things at the top, um, some words I didn't realize were there about little influence, um, arrange for what, always strive at the top in words, uh, drink some comfort. This just sort of, those just sort of happened to be there because I put words, um, and you'll see what I mean by that underneath. And this one I just like, um, it's simple. It's again on a three by five card, three things I like. Um, the, the picture was actually a postcard and it was a place that I it reminded me of a resort that we used to go to when I was a, just a kid. Um, I love music. You'll often see uh, music in, in collages and of course the bird. Um, we're gonna talk about mixing media. A lot of what you saw in those is paper on paper, um, but I really um, added a lot of other kinds of media to the things and I like that as well. And by media, I think we mean different sorts of objects, different types of resources that you can put on a collage. So here's a simple one. Um, there's a lot of, uh, it's paper, but there's paint on there. There's paint behind it and you can see there's paint highlighting it. Um, and also I just wrote the words on here. I don't always put words on things, but sometimes if I'm looking for a theme and it isn't quite right, I find colors and images that sort of express a feeling that I want to bring out the theme. I will find a quote or I'll just write some words on there. It can be um, typed out and, and added, or in this case, my handwriting is not good, but I decided that was okay anyway. Um, here, I'm going to show you a little bit. This is basically looking at a lot of things that are, that are traditional in collage being the paper. And then I added some things that I thought were kind of fun. So what did I add? I added that corrugated piece of paper. Um, it's actually part of a box that I tore apart and tore the paper off the corrugated part. That's up in the top, right? Um, I put some fabric sort of in the middle under that lacy ribbon. And the lacy ribbon was a lot prettier, but I, I 
put some paint on it to sort of grunge it up a little bit. I like a certain amount of grunge. There's paint underneath all of that. I love tags and painting on tags, and those can be tags I make. In this case, it was one I bought, but I don't usually. I just take heavy paper and cut a tag and punch a hole in it. What I really had fun with on this was the toilet paper roll. I didn't want the tag just hanging there. I wanted it to be something. I can actually take this tag out and put it back in. So I took a paper roll, uh, a toilet paper roll and smashed it and put some heavy glue um, to keep it closed and to put it on there. You can see it's very much a toilet paper roll. I painted it and then I stuck the tag in. A um, couple different kinds of mixed media and the one on the left, I've taken some um, fancy paper that I happen to have and some fabric, muslin, very coarse muslin, and I dyed it with coffee. And then I put that little, um, that little listen metal piece on it. And on the right, this one has one of my favorite pieces. Um, actually, it's very small. This is like um, two by or three by three. And this one has a lot of paper on it, but also it has uh, some paint. It has that piece of twine on it and a washer that I happened to find in the street and it was nice and rusty, so I used it. Um, a lot of paper here. I put paper and fabric and I sew them together by hand. My sewing machine, my sewing skills are extremely limited. So I do everything by hand. Found a few words that I liked found something else that I can attach to it. There's a little gear and, and something there, a um, little metal piece. And you can see I wasn't too worried here about staying within the lines on anything, which is what's really fun about collage. Um, one more here, this is more of that, that grungy ribbon. Um, this is one of my absolute favorite poems. And so I just printed it and I put it on here and the birds. And most, one of the most recent ones, you'll see this again, but I've got corrugated paper. I've sewn on a piece of really heavy vinyl paper. I put a tag in it. And on the right, I've got an old coin envelope and a flower that I cut out and just kind of stuck that on there. These are some of my favorites and these aren't mine, but I wanted to show you that sometimes collage is representational. The difference between representational and abstract is basic representational is more realistic. It shows things as you would see them. Abstract is going to be just the opposite of that. It's probably showing you something, but it's not necessarily representational art. I think both of these are representational in different ways. And I like them because there's a fish, of course, I love a fish, so there's a fish on the left, but the fish is not made up of a picture of a fish. It's made up of different kinds of paper that they put together to create a fish. The one on the right, I just found, like I said, these aren't mine, but I found them online and I just had to show you because I think they're so cool. The one on the right is showing a person, obviously, but cut out from different pieces of colored paper. I think that is so much fun. You could do that with any sort of image that you wanted to create. Okay, let's talk about the process. And I need to look at my time to make sure that I'm doing okay. You're doing great. <laughs> Can someone tell me how many minutes I have left and then I will set my timer. Oh, about 12. All right. <laughs> I will, I'm gonna put 10 down. <laughs> I forgot to start my timer, so now I have to start it now. Okay, the process. Um, keep in mind, this is my same list. Get things ready in advance, but don't get locked in. Don't overthink it. Play and have fun. And don't listen to that critic, especially the inner one that says, oh, that's not any good. Oh, that looks weird. Just keep going. Some tips. This looks like a lot, but I'll show you. Gather your materials for your collage. Um, paper, photos, ephemera, and I'll show you what that means that fit your theme, the feeling that you want to express, and that you like. You can start with a base layer of paint or paper or pieces of paper, or you can just begin with a bare substrate. And that substrate means just whatever you're going to put it on. If the substrate is glossy, like if you're using a piece of plastic or something, you might need to add a thin layer of paint because the glue might not stick to it. Um, start by deciding where to place your biggest, visually busiest piece, your focal point first, without gluing. That's important. Do not glue yet. Add as much as you like, gather your things, place them where you think you want them, and then leave it. Walk away. 
um, go do something else, come back to it. I do that several times. Then I move things around. Then I go do something else. Then I come back and I think, well, that was silly. And then I move something else around or I add something else. But this is all before gluing. Once you're happy with the placement, glue it down. Sometimes I take a photo because if you're going to be happy with, then you have to take everything off and put on the underside pieces. So you want to remember where you had them. Sometimes I take a photo. Sometimes I just wing it. Usually I wing it. Um, you can always add more, but it's hard to remove things once they're glued down. So think about that carefully. That's why don't do it right away. If you don't like something you've glued down, cover it with something else. We call that adding texture. <laughs> <laughs> so here's how I started with something. And I started something this morning that, and so you're going to say, wow, that's kind of interesting. Um, and that usually is what people say if they don't really like what I've done. Um, but anyway, it started with a piece of paper, and this is a small piece of paper. I think it is, what did I decide, six by eight. It's not very big, but it's bigger than some of the ones I do. And I started by putting down um, some other paper rather than working directly on the white. And I like that because I like to see it come through, and you'll see what I mean. And you probably saw that in some of the other things that I showed you that I've done. Um, I had learned a lot from watching videos of a woman called Lori Marie Jenkins, and Lori always starts with this, and then she'll paint over it and add more and more and more layers of texture and life to it. What she calls these pieces of paper that you add to a substrate um, is underpants, and I love that. So <laughs> here I'm adding underpants to my collage. And there's more underpants. So you can see I've added a bunch. I'm going to cover a lot of this up but it doesn't matter. I haven't put anything here that's precious. By the way, no materials are precious. You can use them. And then I laid down the pieces that I wanted to put in this. And we're talking about heritage. We're talking about culture and tradition. And so I found some pictures that I really love that express my heritage. Um, the folks in the top around the table, obviously that's not my immediate family. I'm old, but I'm not that old. Um, but sitting around the table was important to us. We ate meals around the table. We played cards around the table. And, you know, it was just a good family time. So that, that was something from my heritage. We don't always have time to do that anymore. But anyway, um, my parents, my mom and dad are there. Love them. Um, my, let's see, um, we lived on a farm. And one of, the, one of the key features of the farm was that windmill. So you can see the windmill over there. Also... Um, you might have noticed that that was in one of my other pictures. I this morning cut that apart. Again, nothing is precious. Um, we like to play games, so there's Monopoly. And we also celebrate with birthdays and Christmas with the extended family. So that's important. And you see I slid in a, a map at the top. Always a map. So then I took everything off and I started putting things back on. So I found a piece of pretty blue paper put that on the corner just to add some color to this because you notice there's not a lot of color in it. Um, and I added that map that I like. This is still on the underpants. By the way, that's not booze at the bottom, it's vanilla. It's vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> My mom cooked, so I like that. <laughs> you see, you can still see that base layer of underpants, can't you? But starting to put things over it. So I added the windmill and the bird I added the monopoly and I added my family there. And that is a family, but it's extended long family. And then I, this is the final piece. So I added my mom and dad. I found some music. Like I said, you'll often find music on my collages, uh, music notes, because that's really important to me. Um, my parents, and I put everything together. I added a piece of lace up in the top. So anyway, there's process. I'll go through this real quickly because I need to get to supplies. Here's another um, image of process. I started with what you see circled at the bottom, my messy desk with my wonderful famous glue stick. Um, and then this is next step and the final result. Same here. I started with things in different places. This is before gluing down on the left, after gluing down um, on the right. And this was one that I actually gave away. Supplies, let's talk about supplies. Substrate can be anything you want. And I mean anything. 
but here most commonly, number one is an old book cover. So this is the front or back, don't worry, I think it's the front of an old book and I cut the book apart so it's a nice heavy cover. Um, be careful, don't do that to books that people want. If you can find an old book that nobody cares about or has fallen apart, use that. Number two is just a piece of cardboard. Cardboard is wonderful as a substrate. Three, index card. Four is um, actually a little piece of art um, uh, board that I bought. I bought a package of those at the Dollar Tree. And I think I got five in a package. They're really small. Uh, five is a postcard, heavy paper, and six is the paper that I put the thing on this morning, the collage on this morning. It's not cardstock. Um, also, you can make a substrate out of uh, photos. These are photos that I um, that I took and I printed them with my handy cheap printer on eight and a half by 11 paper. These can be substrate. My little note at the bottom is that things, um, the glue, if you add a lot of glue to things and the paper is really thin, um, they it can start to get wavy or bubbly. Doesn't, ma doesn't matter, it's okay that way. But if you don't like that, try putting a heavier piece of paper or cardboard behind it. Um, here I used a box and I created this for my daughter. So on the left is the top of the box and on the right is the inside of the box. Gave her that. She thought that was cool. <laughs> now, some things that you need, um, and I'll just go from left to right. Um, at the top is white gesso. You don't have to do that. Any sort of matte acrylic paint would work if you want to. And this is what you can put over things that might be um, glossy. Uh, the brush underneath that, these are really cheap, like a quarter each. You can buy again at Dollar Tree or at Menards or someplace that you can buy those. Yeah. They're with uh, the regular uh, like house painting things. Um, or you can buy a nicer brush, the one right next to it. The blue one is what I would use to maybe put some paint on, although I use both of those. Also, the Mod Podge is helpful if you want to use another kind of uh, um, um, adhesive on the back of your whatever you're laying down. Um, it will uh, maybe not hold as long as the glue stick, but it depends. I also like to use Mod Podge over the top of everything. It's all done, it's set, things are dry. Put a thin layer of that, and it gives sort of a nice matte, but kind of a nice finish to it. The glue stick, of course, I use Avery glue stick, but you could use whatever. And tacky glue is helpful to put down things that, that the glue stick doesn't really work on like some of those metal pieces and things like that. You got scissors at the bottom, big scissors, and then the little ones, which we use, whoops, for what we call fussy cutting, which is basically if you're gonna get really cutting around the edges of everything. Um, and I put paint, maybe, because you saw some paint on mine. Cheap acrylic paint is generally what I use, um, but you can use crayons, you can use markers, you can use all sorts of things. Now collecting, I'm almost out of time. Um, so in other, other words, how did I get so much stuff? I have been collecting stuff. I sit down with magazines when I watch television and cut out pictures I like or texts that I like. Old books, again, make sure they're old ones. Go to the thrift store, find old ones that nobody wants anymore and you don't care about. Um, photos, originals or copies. Everything I make is with a copy because I don't want to use the original. I might want to use it again or maybe it is a family photo that we want to keep. You can make good copies of them. I actually made um, uh, I, um, photos with my with my iPhone of of original photos and then print them that way. That's a pretty easy way to do it. Packaging, all sorts of packaging, postcards, maps. My favorite old sewing patterns are great because the paper is thin and it looks really cool. Um, nature, um, go out and collect things. I've got lots of things from nature. Colored papers, fabric things from the toolbox. The rest of it, don't throw anything away. Okay, that sounds like a rule, but don't worry about it. <laughs> um, okay, quickly, ephemera. These are the bags I put things in when I collect them. That's what my desk looks like on a good day. <laughs> Sometimes it's a lot messier than that, but everything's well. I love that it's at, looking out a window. <laughs> oh, I know the windows are wonderful. If you can do work where you can look outside, it's very inspirational and distracting, but that's okay. Some examples of things I've cut out that were important to me. The hug at the at the corner is actually from a box that some spices came in. Postcard at the top. Others are from magazines. Um, there's some of that um, paper from um, pattern. An old magazine on, on the left 
Uh, you can find things like that at thrift stores sometimes or used bookstores, really old things nobody wants, paper again. Um, nature, um, leaves and just stuff that I find outside. Here's an example of, and you saw um, one of these at the top though in the collage that I made, um, the family around the table. And again, there's the original, but you can see that the copies look really good. And that's a copy of a postcard that is a precious postcard actually from my family history. Um, odds and ends. So one last time, the main thing, and I've got the main things highlighted, don't listen to the critics, especially yourself. Imperfections only add character to a collage. I think it's important to realize that this is your work. It's not being judged by anyone else and you shouldn't judge it. I have people that if I'll, I'll show them a collage and some people like I said will say, well, that's interesting. Okay, that's fine. Some will say that's really cool. Some will say, I love it. Some will say, boy, that speaks to me. That's, that's important, I like that. But there are a lot of collages nobody ever sees. I see them and I look at them around my house and it's important to me because it does bring me joy. Collage gives you the freedom to try new things, to create and to tell your own story. And there's a picture again, of one of my latest collages. So now I'm gonna stop sharing unless you wanted to look at something again and see if you have any questions. Do we have time for questions? Let's see if we have time for questions. Does anybody have, can you, thank you. Uh, anybody have a question for Elaine before we sign off on the process or her how anything anything? You guys ready to dig in? <laughs> okay. Well, if you guys could turn this way and wave and say thank you, we will say goodbye to Elaine. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Have fun with this. We'll send you pictures. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Elaine. Bye-bye. Sorry. What are you trying to do?